Uh, hi, everybody. Um, sorry, it's just some issue with the audio. Um, so welcome. We're going to try another video, catch up video, uh, where we're going to be talking about basically the splenic view on ultrasound. It's something that we have done before. I mean, we haven't done before. We've done liver. We've done quite a few things. And I'm trying something new on uh, on Zoom. Hopefully, it will work. Uh, hope you guys will be able to to see what's going on. All right there we go. Let's close that up over there. Let's resize me here. Move me a little bit out of the way <laughs> that you guys can see what's going on. Let's move that a little bit as well. Okay, so the only thing is, uh, this is a beta version of a, of, a, of, a, of a program that they're trying. So, what's going to happen is if uh, you if you guys don't see the um, the my red mouse, which I've tried to make uh, as apparent as possible, please let me know. Um, but like I say, we are, remember what we're trying to do with the EFAS is determine if this patient has an uh, acute abdomen. So we've had a look at the liver and we've tried to see if there is something going on. Okay? And if there hasn't been anything going on, that doesn't mean that we stop there. We've still got the suprapubic views and we've still got the, um, so we're making sure everything is okay. Uh, and we're making sure that we've got the splenic view as well, because we need to look for injuries in the spleen. We can sometimes see retroperitoneal bleeding on that side. Uh, and pneumo and hemothorax are sometimes I'm also quite easily uh, noted on that side as well. All right. So uh, after you guys watch this video, if anybody has any sort of comments on whether it's better like this or you prefer it, the old way, you can just let me know, but I'm just trying it out. That way you can see me quite easily and you can see the, um, the, 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 the slides at the same time. So let's get going. So let's start. I just hope that you can see what I'm trying to show you here. So we, we have seen this before and basically this is where we place our probe, all right? So our probe is placed in the sagittal plane or basically along the side of the patient's uh, ribs or to change the patient's side to try and look uh, with the indicator pointing towards the head because remember your spleen is sitting just around there where well, it's an organ that looks that way and then you've got your kidney towards the middle so if you were to get a good view this is what you would see you would see a spleen over there remember this is the lateral side closer to your um closer to your probe, and this is your left kidney as well. You would see the diaphragm, as well as the, the spinal stripe over there. And you would see that the same marine effect, although not to the greatest extent, as compared to the, um, as compared to the liver, but you do still see it. So you've got all of these things that are sitting over there. So it's very important to, to know the anatomy and to understand the way that we're looking at it. So essentially what we are doing is we're taking a snapshot that kind of looks like that. So we're not taking an up to down, we're taking a medial to lateral. And when we, when we then um, look through, we make sure that we can see everything. Uh, just gonna move myself again just to make sure I'm out of the way. I see I'm a little bit in the way there for some of them. Okay, so that's what you should see, all right? And I want you to remember this image. Now, this is actually a very good image. In reality, it's actually a difficult image to get because you have a lot of rib shadowing that's going on. And we'll see that in some of those that we look at now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at how we scan a patient, hopefully if it starts. Let's see, whoops, nope. uh, that was wrong. Let's get this full screen again. We've just got to go and just start the video. Hope the video will start. Okay, trying to get everything going. Mm -hmm. 
you say something new. Okay, sorry about that, guys. It's just a bit of a, a bit of a problem with the getting the video started. Um, so we're just going to jump straight into this. So this is how you paste the probe. Okay. The next view I'm going to take you through is the perisplenic or left upper quadrant view. This view tends to be a little. The next view I'm going to take you through is the perisplenic or left upper quadrant view. This view tends to be a little bit more difficult because the spleen is smaller and doesn't provide as large an acoustic window. We're going to start again. Sorry. The patient's going to be supine. This is the probe marker right here. I'm going to go really posterior. My hand is going to touch the gurney. And you can go about four finger breaths just above the costal margin. You can, you can identify the kidney that's going to be a pretty identifiable organ characteristic bean shape and we can see it here on the screen and the next view I'm going to take you through is the perisplenic or left upper quadrant view this view tends to be a little bit more difficult because the spleen is smaller and doesn't provide as large an acoustic window we're going to start again the patient's going to be supine this is a probe marker right here I'm going to go really posterior my hand is going to touch the gurney and you can go about four finger breaths just above the costal margin. You can, you can identify the kidney. That's going to be a pretty identifiable organ, characteristic bean shape, and we can see it here on the screen. And okay, so it was just to show you how to place the probe. My, my apologies, you know, it, uh, it just got stuck a little bit. So let's move on to the next thing. So now we're going to actually look at a video of uh, how we uh, uh, you know, how we actually do the, the exam for the spleen and what we're going to see. So let's just try that. Damn. There's a lot of information we can gain by looking at the left upper quadrant in our trauma patients, and we'll need to know that it's not a mirror image of the right upper quadrant, that the spleen offers less of an acoustic window onto the left upper quadrant than the liver does on the other side. Here's a slide reviewing how to perform the left upper quadrant view of the trauma fast exam. As a spleen offers less of an acoustic window on the left upper quadrant, we need to bring the probe in from a more posterior position. Thus the mantra, knuckles to stretcher. Optimally, we're using a smaller footprint probe that can get in between the ribs and get a good view into the left upper quadrant area. Position the probe in the long axis view with the probe marker towards the patient's head at about the mid axillary line or posterior axillary line with your knuckles almost touching down to the bedside. We'll concentrate on two areas, most importantly, the area above the spleen and below the diaphragm where fluid will preferentially accumulate, but rounding out our exam, we'll look inferior at that spleno-renal space. Now that we know how to perform the left upper quadrant view of the trauma fast exam, let's take a look at a normal ultrasound image. I have the probe oriented towards the patient's head, so superior chest cavity is towards the left, inferior abdominal cavity towards the right. Notice the spleen, the large organ in the middle of the image here, and the kidney, the football-shaped organ, as seen inferior and posterior to the spleen. Notice the curving white line just above the spleen, which is the diaphragm. Recall that in the left upper quadrant, that fluid will accumulate preferentially in between the spleen and the diaphragm and will be a dark or anechoic stripe positioned there. Here's another normal video clip taken from the left upper quadrant. In this case, I'm swinging the probe from inferior, looking at the spleno-renal interface, to superior, looking at that infradiaphragmatic space. And here as I freeze the image, we see the spleen right in the middle of the image, the curving white line making up the diaphragm, and notice the thoracic cavity as seen just left or superior to the diaphragm. If the patient had a significant hemothorax or fluid collection in the thoracic cavity, that would be represented by a dark or anechoic fluid collection just above the diaphragm in the thoracic cavity. Now that we've had a chance to examine several normal video clips as taken from the left upper quadrant, let's look at a pictorial here showing a positive left upper quadrant fast exam. Here we see superior located to the left, inferior to the right. We see the spleen in the middle of the image, the kidney inferiorly to the right, the thoracic cavity with the diaphragm to the left of the spleen or superior. We see the area of fresh fluid is demarcated by the orange color and notice that it layers out predominantly below the diaphragm and above the spleen. And this is the area where fluid will preferentially deposit in the left upper quadrant. There are ligaments that sling from the diaphragm all the way to the colon that prevent the flow of fluid into that area between the spleen and the kidney until the fluid is relatively large within the left upper quadrant. 
So now let's take a look at a positive exam from a trauma patient. And we see here the spleen in the middle of the image, the kidney inferiorly located to the spleen. And notice the large amount of fresh fluid, that dark or anechoic fluid collection that layers out above the spleen in the infradiaphragmatic location and anterior to the spleen. This indicates a large amount of fresh blood in the left upper quadrant. And we also see a blood clot, that echogenic material, waving around anteriorly to the spleen. So a positive exam in a trauma patient. Here's another positive left upper quadrant view. Notice here, there's a larger amount of fresh fluid present on this examination. We see the spleen in the middle of the image, the kidney inferiorly there to the right, and all the dark fresh fluid as indicated by the dark or anechoic fluid collection as seen in front diaphragmatic and above the spleen. Notice again that the fluid is not preferentially layering out in between the spleen and the kidney, reinforcing the point that this is not a mirror image of the right upper quadrant. Here's another positive examination in a patient who comes in hypotensive after being hit by a car. Notice I'm swinging the probe between the kidney up superiorly to look at the spleen. Notice the absence of fluid in between the spleen and the kidney, but the presence of free fluid right above the spleen and below the diaphragm is indicated by that dark stripe. Here's an interesting video clip from a trauma patient. Again, we're looking at the left upper quadrant and we delineate the spleen and kidney. Notice the presence here of fresh fluid, the dark or anechoic fluid stripe as seen layering out superior or an anterior to the spleen there. But let's look above the diaphragm here, which we see is the curving white line moving up and down as the patient breathes. And what we notice here is the presence of a dark fluid collection within the thoracic compartment. So we're able to diagnose in this patient an associated hemothorax in addition to the hemoperitoneum. So the left upper quadrant view, also helpful for looking into the thoracic compartment as well as diagnosing intra-abdominal injury. One maneuver that can help you uncover fresh fluid within the left upper quadrant is to have the patient take a deep breath and analyze that infradiaphragmatic space as the diaphragm moves upward off of the spleen. Notice here that we uncover the amount of fresh fluid that's present right above the spleen and below the diaphragm as the patient takes a deep breath and that diaphragm moves superiorly. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that. It's quite, an, it's quite a nice one. And once you get used to the splenic views, you can actually learn quite a bit. So we're going to try a few now, and we're going to see how we do. So let's try one here. So we need to say, is it a positive study or it's a negative study? Now, this is where it can get difficult with the spleen because of rib shadows. So this is where you have to do something called... Uh, I call it rocking, where you move the, 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 the probe back and forth, and you also sway the probe so that you can try and get in between the... So what we notice is that we see an intact liver. Liver, I'm sorry. If this really was the liver, we're in trouble. It's on that side. Uh, I'm saying we have a spleen and we have a kidney that's going over there. But what we notice, and the diaphragm, of course, in the spleen, and the, the spinal stripe, but we notice that there's no fluid above. So this is a negative study. In other words, there's no evidence of free fluid here. And compare it to the other side where, again, we can see the spleen, we can see the diaphragm, we can see the spinal stripe, we can see the kidney. Here you can see the large amount of fluid that's collected around the spleen. And in this one here, actually, you can see that there's, there's fluid even in between the spleen and the kidney. And I hope sometime later in the future to show you all a retroperitoneal bleed that you can actually pick up on this side, but for right now, we won't stress too much about it. And the one other thing we notice over here, there's a little hemothorax. You'll see that the meringue gets lost as the patient is breathing because there's fluid inside there as well. Okay. So that's a nice one to see. So this one here is very easy because on this one, they showed us exactly <laughs> where the problem is. But I just wanted to show you this one because we've got spleen, we've got kidney, but notice there's not much fluid above the spleen. There's a little bit below, but the majority of it is actually between the spleen and the kidney. So don't think it can't happen. It can definitely happen without a doubt. Right? And here we have a large collection of fluid around the spleen. Right? So you see it's a massive amount that's sitting over there. You know? So the thing is the spleen is one of the most friable organs in the body. If you have a chance to 
work in theater and you have a cornea spleen or you see a splenectomy, it's actually something that's quite squishy. You can just squish it in your hand and it just breaks up. This is a particularly nice view of it. You can almost see the arteries and the, you know, the, the three uh, splenic arteries going through if you look very carefully. Um, and it's just a lovely view of all the free fluid that's all over there. So these are just some examples so that you know what free fluid looks like. The truth is that it's a difficult view to gain. Remember, as they said, knuckles to the table. So you've got to get right down. And as compared to the liver, you've got to go a few centimeters up. And when you do that, that's when you really can see it. And I, and I can assure you that patients who have been injured and tend to be leaning maybe onto the left side, uh, you, you'd actually pick up more fluid around there than you would on the right-hand side, okay? And the thing is with the FAST exam, we want to show as much evidence as possible to the surgeon that's coming that, listen, this is serious. You know? And once we're looking around the spleen, and we assume maybe there's a splenic injury or even if there's free fluid from somewhere else, because the spleen has a potential to bleed so severely, uh, we really need to you know, look for it as well. We had a very interesting case about, I think it must have been about three years ago, we had a young boy, 15 years old, severe scoliosis of the back. So his spine curved directly behind the spleen directly, you know, it just went straight down and then curved towards that side. And one of his friends was playing around with him and just gave him a bit of a punch on that side. So you had his spleen sitting over here and his spine just behind, uh, I'm sorry, uh, his spine just behind on that side. So a little punch actually just caused the spleen to rupture. And he came into us pale, BPs in the ground, and, you know, when we scanned him and you could see the amount of fluid and it was simply because of the scoliosis, just a very interesting case. It's always stuck out in my mind because a direct hit uh, to the spleen shouldn't cause that much damage. It is quite protected. So it just shows you how you can get some weird presentation sometimes. I think that's actually the end. Okay. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about the spleen and the splenic view. Um, the suprapubic view, I'll try and do soon as well. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And uh, my apologies that there was a bit of a break in between. I'm still learning how to do a few of these things. Okay, so uh, let me know if it was okay and we will make more videos. Thanks everybody. Let me just stop the share here. And let me just end it here. Okay, thanks a lot, bye.